All right, this is OpenStax US History, Chapter 26, Section 2, The First New Deal. So recall the first New Deal, or just the New Deal in general. This is FDR, uh, is Franklin Roosevelt, who was the president in 1932. It says plan to fix the Great Depression. That's what the United States is experiencing. The Depression. And this is the plan which is going to do it. Uh, one of the most immediate concerns, of course, is the banking crisis. And so Roosevelt does a lot to solve the problems of, uh, of banks. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that the way that laws are passed. So when we talk about the New Deal, a lot of it is laws slash legislation. So we say that FDR is responsible for passing this, but it's really the Congress, and this is what makes a lot of the New Deal possible, is that the Congress is willing to take the lead from the president, right? So you have essentially a bill. Once it passes Congress, it goes to the president. Once the president signs it, then it becomes actually a law. And we have a whole bunch of laws that are passed that are part of the New Deal. Uh, it's going to seem like alphabet soup because all of these laws that are passed have acronyms to them. We're not going to talk about every single one of them because it just becomes a little bit uh, overwhelming. But your textbook lists pretty much all of the laws that were passed by Congress, signed into law by the president, that make up what we call the first New Deal, the plan to fix the Great Depression. So one of the things that Roosevelt wanted to prevent was bank runs, that is people quote unquote running because of how quickly it happened and how many people did it to banks to withdraw money, right? They wanted to withdraw the money. They wanted to make sure they had it in their hands because so many banks had failed and a lot of people lost their life savings. Roosevelt called for a bank holiday to, to put sort of a stop to this. This was the closing of all banks for four days, right? So just shut down, close all the banks for four days. Meanwhile, Congress passed the Emergency Banking Act, which uh, was designed to assist and help banks. One of the ways that it did that was to take the US off the gold standard. So remove the gold standard, which would allow for more currency to be available. It also allowed for inspections of banks before they could open. So the idea is you shut down the banks with a holiday, you pass the Emergency Banking Relief Act, you remove the monetary system from the gold standard that allows more money to be available, and uh, you put up some in inspections and you make sure that the banks that are allowed to reopen are good enough and strong enough to you know, survive uh, on their own. In order to uh, instill confidence, Roosevelt took to the radio waves and what's called fireside chats. This is FDR's uh, radio, we might call them announcements. And this was one way that Roosevelt communicated, unlike really any other presidents uh, before. Uh, they were called fireside chats because Americans felt like the president was actually inside of their living room chatting next to him by the fireplace. It created a very, you know, Americans came to see FDR as a very personable president for this reason. He was the first to kind of utilize this technology, the radio, which was so important in the 1920s and later and later on, to more or less beg Americans, plead with Americans, put your money back into the banks, because for the banks to operate, Right for banks to hand out loans, and of course those loans go to business, and businesses then hire people. Right, all this is connected. Uh, you know, people have to deposit their money in the bank. Right, and so if banks aren't getting any deposits, if people are not putting their money in the bank, well then the banks have no ways of handing out loans to businesses, businesses can't hire people, hire people or people can't get a paycheck. You know, it's it's a cyclical um, uh, process here. 
And so by pleading with people to put money into the banks, well, then you could start having loans going out again and businesses could once again grow. This was, of course, in response to what had happened during the stock market crash and the bank runs that, that ensued in which people lost their life savings and there was no chance in hell that they were going to deposit their money in the banks because they didn't trust them. Roosevelt more or less pleaded with the public to uh, you know please trust the banking system. And this actually all these things together, the bank holiday, the banking act, the fireside chats all helped to kind of get the banking system back going again in a much better place than it was actually before. Another financial um, uh, part of the, the first New Deal was the Glass-Steagall Act. This would regulate uh, bank investments, specifically their investments in the stock market. Remember, one of the things that made banks so susceptible before was they had taken a lot of their money and invested it in the stock market rather than holding on to it as a deposit. And that was one of the reasons as to why banks uh, pretty much failed during the Depression era. All of this, what, all of what Roosevelt does in the first New Deal is done in the first hundred days. So that is Roosevelt was very quick to act. So the first hundred days refers to the hundred days of New Deal laws passed. All right, Roosevelt acted very quickly, right? Quick. You got to address the problem now. Uh, and again, it's going to seem a little bit like alphabet soup as we go down here, but I do just want to mention a couple of these things. Uh, it's probably not required that you know every single New Deal law that was passed, but I'll just point a couple of them out here. Uh, one major part of Roosevelt's New Deal was to uh, give relief to the masses. This was something that Herbert Hoover was very hesitant on doing. Roosevelt uh, is more willing to do that. Federal Emergency Relief Act or FERA gave states funds and resources for relief. The Civilian Conservation Corps or CCC is a work program. So this would Hire. This one in particular hired young men, the CCC, uh, to do projects like you know planting trees and stuff like that. But this was a way to give people a job and put money in their pocket, which was very important. In fact, Roosevelt had a lot of different works programs. Uh, this is only one, but there are many different work programs that put Americans back to work as part of the New Deal. Uh, the Homeowners Loan Corporation, or HOLC, kept people in their houses. This was to stem the tide of homelessness, right? The Hoovervilles, the makeshift homes that were so characteristic during the era. Uh, so there was, uh, again, relief for the mass population. Roosevelt also focused on institutions and specific constituencies. Uh, farmers were in a uni unique situation and factory or business owners were in unique situations. The AAA or Agricultural Adjustment Act was designed to help farmers. One of the things that farmers suffered from was low prices. That is for crops, so low crop prices. The AAA was designed to raise crop prices by cutting supply, right? So a matter of supply and demand. If you grow too much food and nobody buys it, you're forced to lower the price of it. What the AAA did was that it paid farmers so they didn't grow food or pay farmers when they didn't grow food. That way the supply shrinks and the price goes up, hopefully getting farmers out of the situation. However, though, the AAA had some unintended consequences. One was that some of the crops went wasted. And this, of course, is happening at a time when there are people who are starving. So how much sense does it make to not grow food when there are, are starving people in the United States? It didn't sit well with some. And for many who didn't own land, sharecroppers and tenant farmers, these people were just straight up fired from their jobs. So while this was beneficial for farmers who owned land, for the farmers who didn't own land like sharecroppers and tenant farmers, if those farmers are being paid or if the landowners are not being paid to grow anything, then you don't need sharecroppers and tenant farmers, right? A tenant farmer is a farmer who works on someone else's land. So this was ultimately bad for them. 
Uh, similarly, the NIRA, or the National Industrial Recovery Act, was focused on the in interests of um, business. And one of the beliefs that one of the beliefs that was held by Roosevelt and his uh, his brain trust, right, his group of advisors, was that competition was bad, and instead businesses needed to cooperate, right? That's the idea. Good, right? Cooperate, good. Competition, bad. But to cooperate in order to establish, you know, fair wages, stable prices, uh, reasonable output, that instead of, you know, let's say Pepsi and Coke competing with each other, that if Pepsi and Coke work together for the betterment of the American public, that would be a way out. Uh, pay your workers a decent price. Don't try and jip them trying to make a huge profit. Keep prices stable so people know what to predict in the future. When prices go up and down, that's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, and only produce what is needed, right? Don't produce as much to put the other guy out of business. Only produce what the population needs. To oversee this, the National Recovery Administration, they would really enforce the NIRA. And if you were one of the businesses that participated in this cooperation, right, for the betterment of the public, you would put this uh, poster or this slogan outside of your business. And this was a way to demonstrate to everybody that you were part of the solution and not part of the problem, right? This blue eagle was the, uh, you know, the, the logo of the NRA. Additionally, what this led to, additionally, what the NIRA included was a part about workers' rights where they were guaranteed the right to organize. And what this led to actually was very, was a lot of strikes. So many strikes were happening. In fact, probably more than were good, and this is probably debatable, for the overall economy. Uh, but one thing you can certainly say about FDR, especially with this guaranteed production of workers' rights, is that FDR is probably the president in American history who advocated most strongly for that of workers and workers' unions, uh, more so probably, again, than any other president. The NIRA also included a Public Works Administration, PWA. Again, this is another work program. Uh, things like the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco was built as part of this you know you had things like hospitals that were built and uh, you know various other public works that would eventually and the idea was put people to work right away put money in their pockets so they can go out and buy things so businesses can do well but also serve as investments you know the golden gate bridge hospitals roads etc cetera, etc cetera, would ultimately be an overall benefit to the economy you could think of it more as an investment in the country you pay now and of course you get paid back later. Uh, lastly, there was also particular parts of the country that uh, got special attention, regional planning. One of the territories or areas that was really lacking in infrastructure was the South. The Tennessee Valley Authority brought electricity to the Tennessee Valley, so, which is pretty much the South, an area that was dramatically underdeveloped at the time. Again, putting people back to work, bringing a much needed, um, uh, much needed resource like electricity to you know, thousands of people in that area. When the New Deal was all said and done, there was a lot of things to be, um, there were a lot of concrete goals that were accomplished, but perhaps the most important thing was Roosevelt's willingness and Congress's willingness to take unprecedented action to tackle the economic crisis to depart from the way that earlier presidents and congresses had done before and involve the government in the economy in a way that, again, was unprecedented. And while there was a lot of concrete gains, you could look at statistics like the unemployment rate and wage rate and production rate and all these other things, probably the most important thing uh, the American public got from the New Deal was a new sense of optimism that the United States had the proper tools and the willingness to solve the problem of the Great Depression.